we're here at uh, the convention center in Philadelphia today, uh, and I have with me Professor uh, Val Jamili. Uh, he'll talk to us about the Galileo trial. Um, thank you for taking the time to uh, come to this interview. Um, you know, the first this is the first trial that actually addresses uh, the use of the novel anticoagulants in uh, tap. Can you expand a little bit on the study design? Thank you very much for having me today. Yes, Galileo is uh, one of probably many studies which have been planned in that space, meaning a novel anticoagulation in patients who underwent successful tap implantation. The study was about actually challenging the current paradigm, which is not based on evidence, namely that patient uh, having received a transcatheter tap implantation needs to undertake a dual antiplatelet regimen. That's normally what the guidelines are saying. But we know that there is actually no evidence behind this recommendation. It's just an empiric uh, suggestion coming from what we keep doing in stand. And the study, in fact, was actually randomizing the patient either to an antiplatelet-based treatment strategy or a rivaroxaban-based treatment strategy. Now, it's important to say that it was not just rivaroxaban versus a DPT. In fact, it was a little bit more. It was rivaroxaban plus aspirin the first three months versus DPT for the first three then in two studies, in the two arms, sorry, uh, uh, one of the antiplatelet agent has been dropped, meaning patients were continuing with rivaroxaban monotherapy, on the other side they were continuing with aspirin monotherapy. The study was designed to be a superiority study, actually event driven. We were waiting to reach 440 events, and the study was actually designed to be able to show the superiority of rivaroxaban based strategy as compared to a DPT regimen. So, Professor, why was it terminated prematurely? The study was terminated prematurely actually last year in August 2018 based on the recommendation of the SMP. The Data Safety Monitoring Board is not empowered to stop the study, but of course can advise the Executive Committee to do so. Uh, so after having heard the recommendation from the SMB, despite ourselves actually not being fully aware of the data, but just hearing that there was some safety issue and that could have actually a potential implication with respect to mortality, the Executive Committee decided to immediately stop the study. That's an important point because we were just trying to protect patient safety. On the other hand, when looking at the data right now, we should realize that the DSMB took that decision based on an aggregate adjudicated and also non-adjudicated data that at that moment was available. And so now looking at the data as they are right now, we need to take that into a great consideration. So how do we explain higher bleeding and higher uh, thromboembolic events in the river Oxaban arms? That's a great question, and in fact, I, I don't think we have a good explanation. Uh, let me make perhaps even a step back. How do we explain this excess of mortality in the river Oxaban arm? Well, it's not very clear. Because if you look at the data on intention to treat phase, that's what actually the study still today is showing, namely a nominal p-value for superiority for DEPT over river Oxman with respect to mortality. However, if you really dig into the data, what you see that these fatal events were mainly non-cardiovascular and were mainly happening months, weeks after river Oxman at the end of this continuum. So, in fact, if you make a non-treatment analysis, so you try to analyze only those patients who stick to the recommended regimen, this mortality benefit apparently is not there. Now, I don't want to downplay the results of the study because still we are speaking about an interventional study where you introduce an intervention and then you look what the effect of the intervention is. But we need to take into account that we finally had 44% of the event that had been anticipated. And so at this moment in time, the play of chance cannot be completely excluded. On the other side, the fact that patients were bleeding slightly more on river Oxaban is probably justifiable, taking into consideration that we were actually giving, especially for the first three months, an association of aspirin, which is not really a benign therapy with respect to uh, capability of inducing bleeding complication and river Oxaban. It's important to say that river Oxaban was those at 10 milligram QD, meaning lower regimen that what is currently recommended for HP patient, but still 10 milligram of uh, rivaroxaban, it's still pushing patient to be almost fully anticoagulated. So I think that is probably easy to be explained. The mortality signal is a bit puzzling, and I don't think at this moment in time we are 100% sure that it's really driven by the combination of aspirin and rivaroxaban.
So I'll ask you here, if patients who require anticoagulation for any reason, for example, atrial fibrillation, what would you, based on these uh, um, data results that were presented today, what would you uh, recommend? That's an important question. And if we think historically about all this issue about the reduced leaflet motion or valve thickening, the first measure was given is that you would need to stick to warfarin, vitamin K antagonists, because in fact the NOAC are not able to prevent that. Now, we watch more data, we have seen that is probably not the case. No, probably as good as a vitamin K antagonist to prevent that. And that would lead me to basically conclude that probably at this stage I would be very liberal in prescribing NOAC. Having said that, it's fair to say we don't have specific data. And it's also important to note that there is a mega study already running and perhaps very close to being completed, which is a study based on actually at Oxman. That study is actually focusing on a completely different subpopulation than what Galileo has focused on, meaning patients with oral, with a formal indication to oral antipopulation. And these patients are actually being randomly allocated to Doxman versus the Kemenki antagonist. That study will probably arrive in one year from now, and that study will be very informative. For the time being, my practice that I, I am liberally prescribing NOAA without any specific preference because we don't have actual clear cut data. And in post havi patients uh, right now, based on the results of the Galileo trial, um, are you recommending just dual antiplatelets if there's no other indication for oral anticoagulation? That's what I would actually recommend. Also taking into account that the evidence for DPT is extremely limited, and so my threshold to say you are very high bleeding risk, I'm not sure you really need two antiplatelet therapy. In case of doubt, I go with one. Because in fact, we do have very marginal data, but some data suggesting that, of course, if you just stick to one of the two antiplatelet agents, the bleeding risk is, is actually lower. I have to say that these data are coming from a relatively small study. If you look at the meta-analysis, the difference is very high, but in fact, if you carefully look into the data, is mainly coming from periprocedural story because the patients were actually randomized to either aspirin or a DPT, but with the clopidogrel being given before TAVI, so the patients were pretreated. That is probably not a very good idea in TAVI. And in fact, the bleeding risk signal that you see there is mainly periprocedural. Anyhow, we have to say the standard of care now is a DPT regimen, but again, if you feel that the patient is too high risk and could not even tolerate that for a few months, I have very limited, a very low threshold to stick to only one. And so are novel anticoagulants in TAVI finished? Is it the end of it? Are we not going to see any more trials coming up? To look no, I think it's the opposite actually. It's probably the, the beginning of a new year. There is a, an Atlantic study which is running that is actually in a way also asking a similar question that Galileo asked. So whether in patients without formal o indication there is still room for anticoagulation. And I was mentioning already the visit TAVI study where this comparison in patients with formal uh, indication to oral anticoagulation has been uh, investigated. And I'm pretty sure that with the uh, development of factor 11 inhibitor, that will be a new era for anticoagulant in TAVI patients. Thank you. Thank you.